Hello, friends. Welcome to the podcast. This is the JRPG Report, episode 119, and I'm just a little bit fired up today. Uh, We had the New Game Plus Expo going on yesterday, and we've got a whole bunch of things to talk about. I don't want to beat around the bush. You know why I'm excited, but let's go ahead and make it official that uh, NIS America finally gave us a definitive release date for your favorite and mine, (laughs) The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 4. It will launch for PlayStation 4 on October the 27th. That is the North America and European date. Uh, You do have to wait a few more days in Australia and New Zealand if you're listening to this podcast. Uh, You'll get it on November the 3rd. Um, Of course, those Switch and PC versions, uh, just like the last time, you guys are going to have to wait a little bit. They will follow in 2021 so we will now get the end of saga conclusion to this cold steel marathon reen and all of class seven will uh, find its way to north america shores on october 27th is pretty much exactly when i thought this game was going to come out what i was when i was hoping this game would come out. Well, I, I guess I wish I had it right now, but <laughs> uh, that late October seemed like a good window for it. We've talked about this game before, so you already kind of know all about it. We don't need to really speculate on it, but yeah, needless to say, very excited. I was hopeful we would get this information, and in fact, we did. And I know a lot of you guys are very excited to know this final release date. There was a trailer that went along with it as well. Keep in mind, as with anything Legend of Heroes related, if you have not played all of the first three games, probably don't want to watch this trailer. Uh, Or if you're like halfway through part three, something like that, it may spoil a few little things. That's just the way it goes with these games. It's impossible not to spoil certain aspects if you've not read the entire story (laughs) and played it this far but uh, if you are excited as i am you can check out that gameplay let's say gameplay it's really not a whole lot of that there is some of it in there it's it purely looks like this is just a continuation of part three there haven't been the big changes we saw like from part two to part three it is just let's get this story wrapped up that's not uh not mess too much with it sorry a pretty uh will old machine so but you can check that out on our youtube page as you can all the things we talk about today most of these do have videos so uh, obviously from the expo you got to have yourself a, a nifty video to talk about but of course that is our lead today here on the JRP, jrpg report my name is james fisher thank you for tuning in this week and every week we try to always do this thing on wednesday it worked out perfectly with that new game expo going on yesterday and it was just a whirlwind of stories popping out left and right what they kind of did was they had a timetable set out for all the companies and typically like with e3 during your presentation you might lead with that trailer or um maybe at the end that would come out but what they did was things started popping off pretty early around eight or nine o'clock like all these stories started flipping out about well, first Cold Steel and then the rest of things we were talking about today. And then the actual time uh, presentations was more of, you know, like a Let's Play segment or interviews with developers. So it was a bit weird. Like all the big chunks of news hit first and then throughout the day, kind of some other small little things popped up here and there. So it was it was nuts. Personally, I was trying to push all this stuff out while still, you know, doing my normal job and some of those things get in the way from time to time. Um, the next thing we want to talk about also from NAS America and also what we were hoping for. That's right. Yeez nine Mostrum Knox is headed 
to PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC via Steam in North America and Europe in 2021. So you might have been hoping for something a little bit earlier than that, Yeast fans. You're going to have to wait a bit longer, and that's a pretty wide open, not even like saying winter or spring or quarter one or quarter two. They're just committing to 2021 at this point. Uh, It will support English and Japanese audio options. Um, You can order the $99.99 limited edition. It's available now on the NIS America online store. That's for PlayStation or Switch. These limited editions will include the packed edition of the game, Monster Memoirs mini art booklet, Melodies of the Macabre, that's a one-disc original soundtrack sampler, the reverse cover sheet, Chains and Chansons, a one-disc official soundtrack, Nails in the Coffin, hardcover art book, The Lost Sword, which is a Yeez 9 prequel short novel, and the Crimson King chibi figure, as well as the Monstrums and Baldo art card collection, Baldo's most wanted keychain set, and a Monstrum box. That's a lot of stuff for a hundred bucks. You, if you're a fan of this one, I dare say you're going to want to pony up a bit more cash and go and grab that one. Uh, keep in mind, Yeast Nine came out in September of 2019. In Japan, that's that's kind of unacceptable in As America. That's way way too long on your translation. Um, I gotta. I, I don't think I'm speaking out of line and saying a year is a long time. But by the time this one actually comes out in 2021, you're gonna be talking close to a year and a half, and that's just that's just too long to make people wait for this. Uh, there was an awesome new trailer to go along with this one, so you'll want to, of course, head over to YouTube and check that out. There's quite a few videos to go through, so you may have to scroll down on that one to figure it out. Here are the key features of this one, since we've not talked about it in a while. Uh, they are feared protectors. You can play as any of the six notorious monstrums, each with their own unique gifts that grants abilities such as shearing or scaling sheer walls or detecting hidden objects to protect the city from shadowy creatures. They say there is a world within these walls. Explore the massive city, accept quests to aid the townsfolk, and you can enter the Grimwald Knox to vanquish the threats to Baldu. Strength of the Night. Familiar mechanics such as Flash Dodge and Flash Guard allow you to outmaneuver your foes, while new additions such as the Gifts and Boost Mode further argument <laughs> further augment your ability to fight. So you can join Adel and his new uh, com- uh, new peoples, as well as Doggy. Uh, I didn't know that he was going to be in this one. That's pretty cool. Or Dodgy. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, actually. D-O-G-I. As well as, again, those Monstrum characters. There are some pretty cool abilities in those guys. Hopefully, this one comes out uh, towards the earlier part of 2021. There's some really cool... Um, it's it's kind of interesting. If you look at um, the Trails of Cold Steel 4 art that came out yesterday, along with the Yeez Monstrum's art. Cold Steel is kind of facing all... They're on the left side and kind of facing towards the right. And the Yeez side is all on the right and kind of facing toward the left. It almost looks like they're about to go on this like big uh, Avengers Infinity War type of battle against each other. Just kind of, I'm not sure if that was intentional or not, but it certainly kind of has that impression. So two big announcements from NAS America to start this thing off. If you've not already ordered um, your Cold Steel 4 limited edition, um, both me and Jake nailed ours down yesterday from the NAS America store. As far as I know, that's the only way to get it. It's going for ninety nine ninety nine, and stock when I ordered it was down to that uh, twenty five to fifty percent level. So not quite in the um, 
oh my gosh, I better hurry up category, but you don't want to wait. This is usually what happens is you have a certain segment that will early adopt and get in there early. Most people, and I guess I'm kind of in this category as well, once that firm actual numbered release date comes out, that's when I plop down the money for it. So you probably don't want to wait too much longer if you're looking to get that, as I dare say it'll sell out pretty soon. I'm not, it's not on Amazon as far as I know. It's not on Best Buy either. I think this is an exclusive from uh, the NIS America online store. You can find that direct link in the articles that I post on Facebook. All right, I have calmed down just a little bit. It's hard to hide my excitement for that part. Uh, we'll get back to the games that showing off yesterday, but quickly, today there was an announcement. Remember last week, the Pokemon company teased that there would be another announcement today on June the 24th. And in fact, there was another game is coming from the Pokemon company, and it is called Pokemon Unite. Uh, in cooperation with Tencent Games, TIMI Studios, they announced this strategic team battle game, Pokemon Unite. It's coming out for Switch, iOS, and Android devices. It will be free to play with in-app purchases. No release date was announced. So here's what this one's about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of course, there is a trailer to go along with this. I've posted both the, uh, the short one-minute trailer for Pokemon Unite and the entire 11-minute presentation for Pokemon Presents on the YouTube channel if you want to check those out directly. Here's an overview. They say Pokemon Unite is a strategic team battle game being developed jointly by the Pokemon Company and the aforementioned Tencent Games. Timmy Studios, I guess that's how you say it. Uh... The game is planned as a cross-platform game for Switch and mobile devices and will be free to play. Well, actually, it says will be free to start. That's interesting. I haven't heard that one before. In this game, players face off against each other in five-on-five -five team battles. During battles, players will cooperate with teammates to catch wild Pokemon, level up, and evolve their own Pokemon, and, of course, to feature opponents' Pokemon while trying to earn more points the, the opposing team within the allotted time. Uh, this game introduces a new kind of battle, one that requires teamwork and strategy. It is simple and yet full of intricacies waiting to be unpacked. At least it sounds like a different take on it. it sounds pretty cool, not your standard fare. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it turns out and uh, when they do get a release date. I will let you guys know what that's going to be. Uh, back to the uh, New Game Plus Expo. Um, there was a new trailer for Fairy Tail. It was right under two minutes long, and uh, the game is shaping up pretty nicely. Of course, it's coming out on July 30th for PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC via Steam in Europe and Japan. The next day, July 31st, in North America, uh, this new trailer doesn't show a ton of new stuff, uh, new mechanics. It does show new scenes. It's all new um, leading up to that release. The game looks more and more promising. Um, I posted the video and had quite a bit of response to it. People seem to be pretty excited about this one. I think you've got a segment of fans of the anime that are excited for this one, as well as people like myself who have not seen the anime, but just think the game looks pretty cool. Uh, here's a quick overview of it. Uh, Fairy Tale's extraordinary world of magic and dragons is captured in remarkable detail through this all-new gaming experience with a phenomenal focus on delivering the type of magic and mystique fans of the worldwide sensation anime and manga series have been craving. In Fairy Tale, characters can now combine in a unison raid to unleash their magic spells at once to overpower enemies. This unison raid ability originally premiered in the anime and manga, but in this game, all new magic and character team ups will be featured, introducing exciting new powers from never before seen character combinations. Again, it sounds pretty awesome. When you see this one, in action, it just looks like a lot of fun. 
Um, there's really no other way to say it. It just looks fun. The game uh, looks just like the anime, so it's really cool looking. But yeah, I encourage you to head over to our YouTube channel and check that one out if you have not already. Got two new trailers this last week. First, uh, before the show, Compile Heart released a five-minute trailer for Neptunia Virtual Stars. Uh, this one kind of goes into some more details on the character, shows off a little bit more of uh, the characters that you will be duking it out with. This one's coming out on August the 6th in Japan, and then sometime in 2021 in North America and Europe. But the one that was a little more interesting was the one that came out yesterday, and it was only about a minute long, um, but really just concise and really showing off um, more of the battle system than anything else. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Here are the key features of this one. You can switch on the fly, seamlessly switch perspectives between melee and ranged shooter characters in a fast-paced hack-and-slash battles, get the right combos for more bonuses and greater damage. Uh, you'll have that beat-tick rhythm game to team up with real-life virtual YouTubers and get fans riled up in the Beat Tick Rhythm Game performances to save the planet. I always love it when I get those rhythm games in the middle of my JRPGs. Oh, fun, good. Um, <laughs> background music can help or hurt you in special boss battles, changing battle conditions, and even unlocking coordinated finishing moves. And those virtual YouTubers can randomly join you during battle to help as well. The game looks pretty fun. We'll have to wait a little bit longer until it heads to our western shores also from this show death and request 2 announced it will launch physically and digitally for playstation 4 and pc via steam on august the 25th in north america europe will get it three days later on august 29th and they'll go for 59.99 publisher idea factory international announced of course it wouldn't be a proper game without a limited edition. You can check out the ID Fact Idea Factory International online store for a $99.99 limited edition of the PlayStation 4 version. You get a copy of the game, hardcover art book, still game case, novel, soundtrack, a Wordsworth Dom Dorm bag, an exclusive trading card. Those pre orders are not available just yet but it will be soon i'm sure there will be a 999 digital deluxe pack that will be available as additional purchase for pc versions that'll get you two digital art books um, game shaping up pretty good there is of course the uh accompanying preview trailer for the game if you'd really like to get a a good look at it but don't have to wait too much longer for death end request two um this was not from the show but uh, i guess i should mention this with the neptunia we talked a little bit about before but mega dimension New newtonia v2 i learned that's how it's not it's not seven it's supposed to be called v2 that's what dalton says from his uh steam uh, oh gosh i forgot your name your podcast buddy I'm sorry. Steam Machine <laughs> podcast he puts on. They did a Neptunian title, and apparently it's supposed to be called V2. Anyway, the Switch version of Mega ne Dimension Neptunia V2 will launch via the Nintendo eShop on July 28th in the West, and it'll go for $29.99, the game's uh, Nintendo eShop page revealed. Uh, the DLC that was previously made available for the PlayStation 4 and PC versions will be available for purchase as add-on content for this Switch version. This game first came out quite a long time ago on April, I'm sorry, February of 2016 in the West. PC got it July 2016. Uh, this was quite a while ago. So yeah, finally Switch owners can check out this game. Um, more of a traditional um, one. I believe this is a a turn-based battle system in this one, if I recall. But yeah, of course, there was the uh, release date trailer to go along with this as well. So if you've been holding out for all these years, 
and you've got your Switch, you can pick it up on July 28th in the West. We got one last game from the New Game Plus Expo uh, to talk about, and then we'll take a brief little pause. Uh, publisher NIS America and developer, my new favorite developer name ever, uh, Yummy Yummy Tummy, announced Fallen Legion Revenants for PlayStation 4 and Switch during the live stream. It will launch in 2021. It is a sequel to the duology Fallen Legion, Sins of an Empire, and Fallen Legion, Flames of Rebellion. There are pre-orders now live for a limited edition uh, through the NS America online store. It's going to go for 75 bucks. Here is an overview of the game. It looks pretty fun. Uh, they say the about in a world covered in miasma. I always loved miasma. It takes me back to uh, my Tales of Abyss playing days. Uh, a floating castle is the last refuge for mankind. The earth is scarred with beasts mutated by the plague, while Wilkin Castle is quarantined from the horrors below. Lucian, a charismatic politician protected in the castle walls, discovers an ancient book where he learns of the Expellers, weapons that can turn into sentient soldiers. He joins forces with Rowena, a revenant determined to find a way to come back to life to raise her for a way to come back to life to raise her living son, okay, and two reluctant and the two reluctantly make a pact to overthrow the mad tyrant controlling the castle. Here are the key features that you can be the weaver of fate. Influence the events within the castle through your dialogue choices and determine who lives or dies with every decision you make. Unearthly warriors. As Rowena text your reflexes and tactical prowess with intense real-time battles as you command a squad of legendary explorers to decimate your foes. And, of course, there's forbidden knowledge as Lucian craft potions and other useful items with alchemic recipes and use stealth tactics to navigate the castle and discover its secrets. It just looks like a kind of an interesting game. I don't know a ton about it. There's a trailer to go along with it. You can check it out as well. Kind of got that really unique art style and something that's at least grabbed my initial attention. We'll wait and see how it shapes up as we get closer to its launch in 2021. Um, Before we take a break, quickly want to preview. Uh, We did something kind of different this last Sunday, kind of looking at what's going on so far in 2020, what we have to look forward to. Um, This Sunday, we're going to bring back Jordan and have a conversation um, I'm trying to work out all the details and do a recording here, I believe tomorrow for our Sunday special. And, uh, so we're going to kind of have some fun talk. Uh, we'll talk a little Xenoblade Chronicles, I'm sure. But, uh, mostly since we've both now completed Final Fantasy VII Remake, we'll have some good conversations about it. And then we'll talk about Trails of Cold Steel. Uh, he is, uh, just getting in to the first one. Um, of course, I've played them. Now, he's played the Sky series, so I want to talk to him a little bit about those as I'm going to really try to play through those titles before Cold Steel 4 comes out. So we should have a fun uh, JRPG chit-chat about things, maybe and throwing some fun topics as well. But I hope you will look forward to that Sunday special coming out Sunday morning. But let's take a quick break and be right back with the second half of episode 119 here on the JRPG Report. All right, friends, welcome back. We've got a few more fun stories to talk about with you guys. Of course, like us on Facebook, follow on Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube to get daily updates as well as videos on all the things we talk about here on the podcast. Um, I'm excited to announce that the final closed beta for Genshin Impact will be on July 2nd for PlayStation 4, PC, iOS, and Android. Publisher and developer MiHoYo announced um, this game is supposed to launch for those devices on in 2020. A Switch version is also planned, but that release window has yet to be determined. So if you signed up for the open beta, check your 
email inbox. Let's see if you got an invite. You may need to go and check like the spam folder, or if you're using uh, Gmail, check um, like your promotions or uh, the other tabs to see if it didn't get thrown in there as that's where I found my invite. I was selected to participate in this one and I'm happy to do it. I'm excited about this game and what better way to see <laughs> how it is than to uh, give it a whirl. Um, I haven't read all the fine details, so I'm assuming that I'll be able to stream this as well. I have to wait and see if that is allowed or not, but, uh, Needs to say, I'll definitely give my impressions to you guys once I play it for a little while and uh, see if it's going to be worth your time as well. Uh, Yeah, forward to it. I'll let you guys know. A interesting looking game uh, got an announcement. I believe that was actually uh, today. And so we always talk about our beloved JRPGs. We don't talk about very many K RPGs or Korean uh, role playing games, but uh, here we go. A Korean publisher, Line Games, and developer Studio REG have announced the strategy RPG, The War of Genesis Remnants of Grey for Switch. This game will not launch until 2022. Here's an overview of it. Of course, there was a teaser trailer to go along with it as well if you want to check it out on our YouTube channel. Uh, War of Genesis Remnants of Great is a adventure strategy RPG currently under development by Line Studios, Line Game Studios REG. Based on Korea's popular Way of Genesis series, the game is a remake of the first and second sequels of the series and is built using Unreal Engine 4. The game is scheduled to release on Nintendo Switch in 2022. There's an official brand page if you want to check it out and get it translated. But I encourage you to check out this um video using this unreal engine 4 they've made an impressive looking game um i know with unreal engine 4 you kind of get like well they kind of everything all looks the same well i mean that's what's developed on that's what's going to be but i like the way this thing is looking and for a switch game it looks pretty cool. Of course, it's going to be a while, 2022. But yeah, just check it out and let me know what you think about it. Um, I kind of just, you know, put these stories out there and let you guys decide whether or not it's something you want to pay attention to. It'll be a while. So got a while to wait. Um, got a while to wait on this one, too. And that is Sea of Stars. There was a new trailer debuted during the Summer Game Fest 2020 Developer Showcase. Uh, they did announce that uh, the Kickstarter backers who pledged for access during a, for a playable demo will be able to play this demo very soon. The demo was cut from the middle section of the game, and uh, they have the two main protagonists going to quest without the rest of the party through areas including an outdoor dungeon, town, as well as an indoor dungeon. According to Sabotage, spoiler tags will be used quote-unquote profusely <laughs> to preserve the experience of the full game. Major gameplay systems such as leveling up, upgrading equipment, and harvesting food will all be in place. You can even see what they're talking about during this uh, trailer. There is a just a dialogue scene between um, the two main characters as well as the cook, and it blanks out um, with a little... Um, oh gosh, I forget what it says, but basically like, you know... Uh, omitted for spoilers or something to that effect banner across the text that uh, would have given away some some major thing uh really love the way this game is looking but again it's planned for release on consoles and pc via steam in 2022 and uh I believe I had a, a conversation, uh, it might have been with Jake, over on Twitter that uh, we love the way this game looks. It's got that really cool retro style. Why in the world is it taking so long to make? Um, 2022 seems like a long time away for a retro-inspired game. Um, the, the consoles that it plans to come out for, be it PlayStation 4 or uh, I guess, well, Switch will still be kicking just fine, but I mean, we'll already be on to the next system for over a year by the time this thing finally pops out. So I kind of 
said that maybe that this, since they've met all their Kickstarter backings, that maybe that pushes up the timeline into at least next year, right? But I don't know. They they came out with this new trailer, and it still sticks to that 2022, so maybe they just don't want to rush themselves. Anyway, the game looks really promising. Looking forward to it, but I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer. If you are a player of Tetris 99 and you would like to show everyone the power of the Bonado, you can do so here real soon as a kind of odd Tetris 99 slash Xenoblade Chronicles crossover event has been revealed. There will be a Xenoblade uh, Chronicles theme that you can apply to it. I'm not quite sure how this all works. I've not played Tetris 99. A new theme is on the way. You'll have to wait until next month to earn it. Nintendo Switch Online subscribers who take place in the July 3rd through 6th event will be able to play uh, with a theme from Zimbabwe Chronicles in the background as well. Also, the user interface for the design looks like the Monado. So kind of kind of an interesting um, way to do it. It basically just looks like a background, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, I think I'm getting towards the end of the game. Um, maybe. I don't know. I kind of had to do a, a pretty much an entire night of leveling up last night to uh, get myself at a, at a nice, comfortable level. The game is phenomenal, but I'm actually going to go out of town for a couple of days here soon. And I would really, you know, I don't know if you guys ever do this, but if you're going to know if you're going to be taking a break, like going out of town, even though it's on the switch, um, I don't want to sit around playing video games while we're supposed to be having fun. You kind of want to be done with something if you're near the end of it so that you can come back and play something else. That is kind of where I'm sitting out with that. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. Also in Nintendo news, uh, the new Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Amiibos have been shared, and you're going to have both Dragon Quest Hero and Persona 5's Joker. They will be out in the fall of 2020. This is the hero from Dragon Quest Eleven that will be available as Amiibos. Kind of cool that they're throwing them out there, and they look pretty fun. This, this is the type of uh, thing that I might just get even if I'm not going to play Smash. Just because they look cool, I don't know. They're kind of they're not cheap. Was Amiibo's going for like twenty or twenty five? But yeah, they look they look awesome. This I'll be honest, the Joker almost looks like it's more inspired by Scramble than uh, Persona Five or Persona Five Four. I may just be guessing at that, but we'll have to wait and see. So I do want to talk about something a little important and. We may need your help on this. I filled out a survey yesterday, and I'm 99% sure I shared this on the Facebook page as well. This was on Twitter. I know I I retweeted it. Um, Sega and Atlas have put out a survey asking on people's insights on their gaming habits. Um, It talks about pretty much every Sega or Atlas game you could think of and kind of asks your playing uh, it asks about which systems you're playing and subscription services they take advantage of. Um, but one of the things that kind of asks in particular is, based on the games that you say you've played, would you be interested in DLC for that game? Would you be interested in a spinoff for that game? A remake, a remaster, or a sequel? So... Without, it's hard not to read into this, and it's a long survey. It's going to take you about 15 minutes to get done. In my mind, I'm thinking that this is some sort of way for them to gauge interest in if we want Persona 5 Scrambler or not. At this point, there was nothing announced yesterday that seemed like that would have been a pretty darn good time to announce something. Instead, they announced a survey, and obviously there's a bunch of other games in there, but I feel like this is going to be one of the gauges used to measure if there's enough interest in the West to bring the game over. I filled it out, and I did my part. If you guys want to do so as well, it can't hurt. There's some other cool things in there as well, but I think this is... This may be kind of important. We'll just have to wait and see 
if it is something that ends up being true or not. One last story to pass along to you guys before we wrap it up. Uh, Compile Heart, they update their website, and we got a few more characters to talk about. First is Michiru, M-I-C-H-I-R-U. Uh, she is the founder of the Order of the Sun of the Underground Prison. Achieving her goal of reaching the surface seems to have lightened her mood, but her cryptic remarks and tendency to toy with others have not changed. And then you have Chaiki, Chaiki, C H I A K I, the sub leader of the Order of the Sun of the Underground Prison. He is actually um, Mitru's younger brother. I was going to say they look like brother and sister, um, and constantly worries about her. While he is used to being composed and intimidating, reaching the surface is taking a load off his shoulder, and he is now less vigilant. There is a new opening movie that you can check out for this one. I've got that shared over on our YouTube channel. Mary Skelter Finale is due up for PlayStation 4 and Switch on October 8th in Japan. And uh, there was no Western release date announced during the New Game Plus Expo. Um, Idea Factory was at that, but not Compile Hearts. So maybe that's why we didn't get anything from them. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um uh, kind of thought I might talk a little bit more about certain things, but this was more of a, um, it's, you know, I don't want to dissect trailers for you guys. I'll, I'll bring you the news. You guys check them out if you would like to, and, uh, let me know which games you are most excited about. Maybe I'll post something over on Facebook and see which new game announcement you're uh, most excited about. And don't forget our Sunday special coming up with Jordan should be, a lot of fun. If you are so inclined, leave us a uh, well, <laughs> leave us a review of this podcast, whatever device you listen on. And uh, if you're super awesome and want to give us support, we are doing so through Anchor at the bottom of this podcast, also through Patreon with different levels of support. That'd be incredible if you would like to sign up for that and keep this podcast rolling on strong as it is. That's going to do it for episode 119 the JRPG Report. My name is James Fisher. I will talk to you guys again on Sunday and be back next Wednesday with another great podcast. Till then, get back out there and level up.